So that leaves just the last, the fifth question, and it says, do people with schizophrenia and similar mental illnesses have two minds? Now here we have a little problem. Schizophrenia, the word schizophrenia literally means split thinking, split in thought. Um, but uh, in th that leads the, the, the popular, uh, has led to the popular misconception that schizophrenia means split mind, a split personality. So I think that this questioner uh, is in fact not asking about schizophrenia so much as about split personality, uh, multiple personality, multiple identity disorder. Um, there are various names by which the condition um, is, is, uh, is identified. But basically, it comes down to the, 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 the thing that the, that the question is about, which is if, if you have two or, or, or more personalities, um, then do you have two or more minds in those specific disorders? Now, there's been quite a bit of research uh, on these disorders. And um, uh, uh, looking at questions of continuity from the one uh, uh, um, uh, identity to the other, from the one altar, as they call them, to the other. And there are interesting continuities between them. Uh, for example, episodic memory, that is memory for events, uh, experiences, uh, might not be shared across the different altars. But procedural memory, that is certain uh, basic skills, like how to ride a bicycle, or um, indeed even you know, how to speak, um, these skills are shared and the languages uh, in which um, the, the personalities speak are shared. So there seems to be some aspects of cognition which are, which are constant across the different personalities and other aspects of cognition which are not. Um, and those other aspects are the, 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 the um, aspects of mind, therefore, that this question is about. Um, I, I think that it's implicit in what I've said already that no, I don't believe that such patients have two minds. I think that they have two as they have aspects of their minds which are which are uh, split, um, and episodic memory is one element that I've spoken uh, of. Other aspects of their mind are not split, and even those aspects are cognitive aspects. That is to say, language, procedural skills uh, of various kinds. But again, I would draw attention to the deeper um, parts of the mind that transcend all cognition, the deeper core of the mind, which has to do with the capacity for consciousness in, uh, at all, and for the feeling states that that form of consciousness uh, uh, takes, that raw consciousness is always, always feels like something. That core is the... Is the, is the essence of the being of a person. It's the, it's the, that, I think, is always singular. It relates to the representation and the monitoring of one body. Um, but it is very interesting that you can represent yourself in two utterly different ways within episodic memory. So I think that further demonstrates the main point that I'm making here, which is that we mustn't overvalue the, the way we think about ourselves, the way we present ourselves, and so on. These higher tertiary um, cognitive processes are not the essence of who we are. They are ways of thinking about ourselves, ways of representing ourselves, even to ourselves. And um, the pathological um, exception proves the rule that the, 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 there's, there's one sentient being, that that's really who you are, and that is your, your, your affect, your, your emotional presence. And then you can have different ways of cognitively elaborating and representing this with different types of memory sets corresponding to those different representations, those different selves. But those selves, those cognitive things, are not really you. Uh, they are ways of thinking about yourself, ways of representing yourself, not to be mistaken for your actual sentient basic presence, of which I think there is only one in each of us, attached to one body, which is the starting point for how we can think about all of this scientifically. So these questions this week have been very deep questions, um, uh, 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 touching on very broad and complex areas. 
My answers, therefore, have had to meander a little all over the place, but uh, I hope that it gets your own mental balls rolling, and I would particularly like uh, to go back to that first question, the question as to whether or not the, 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 the properties that I'm proposing are fundamental to the mind, whether these are mandatory, necessary conditions for a mind. Uh, I would particularly like to know whether any of you think that the, those four can be reduced uh, further or, uh, more likely, whether any of you think that there are other properties that are also necessary conditions for what we might call a mind to exist. Okay, till next week. Thanks very much. Bye.